Okay guys, back with another video. Um, I've had a lot of requests on how to actually analyze or dig through uh, distributors and suppliers price lists. Uh, this seems to be a common issue or a common topic that keeps on being brought up. So that's exactly what I'm going to do in this video. I'm going to show you how to do the free method, guys. The 100% free method. There's no tools involved, no monthly subscriptions, no fees. This is how to do it. But before we get started um, on how um, or how to do that, guys, uh, number one is I want to announce the winner of the last video. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, every video that I do, um, I pick somebody from the comment section below that has liked the video and left a comment and I give them a free consultation call with myself. So I'm going to put a screenshot of the winner's name somewhere up here on the screen. Um, if that's you, please reach out to me through email. The email will be in the comment section below and uh, we'll get in touch and we'll do that free consultation. Thank you so much, guys. If you want to uh, enter a contest on this specific video, like I said, smash that like button, guys, and leave a comment in the comment section below and uh, you can have an opportunity for a consultation call with me. Now, one last thing before I get started. One thing I wanted to mention and ask for everybody's feedback is... I am debating, guys, on dropping an Amazon FBA wholesale course. Now, I know everybody's screaming, oh my God, not another person dropping a course. But guys, this would not be a $2,000 course or some crazy expensive um, course that you guys don't need. If you guys watch my videos, you know that I am a huge advocate of doing things as cheaply as possible and I do not advertise or um, or promote paying for any monthly services and I always teach the free method of of making money online and how to actually run this business model so if you guys would be interested in me dropping a course it wouldn't be anything expensive I don't know exactly how much it would be um, you know I maybe you'd be like a hundred or two hundred dollars to uh, you know for the course it'd be something super affordable the reason why I'm thinking about doing this is because I have so many people reaching out to me to do the consultation calls that it takes up so much of my time and you know if I was able to just put up a course and have people get all the same information and me on a video teaching you how to do all this stuff compiling all this information into one spot in video format for you guys I think it'd be super beneficial and it would relieve me of my time of having to sit down and actually teach it one-on-one -on -one. so if you guys like the idea of that leave some feedback in the comment section below guys please let me know yes no maybe um, what do you guys think about me doing that if I get some uh, positive feedback then maybe I'll put some more thought into it and I'll start creating a course and see how much time it actually takes me. Um, if not, you know, no problem for me. I don't need to create a course. Um, you know, I just figured that uh, it would be there to help you guys and I enjoy doing this kind of stuff. To show you guys what exactly is going on here with Amazon currently. Um, how do I get this close up? I got... I'm at 53.77 thousand for the last 30 days. Let me refresh this for you guys so you guys see this isn't just a screenshot. Um, $851. Okay, maybe I need a new phone. <laughs> um, $851 for the day. Let me see. Amazon owes me 21, or sorry, almost $21,000, my current balance. So, it's been a great month, to say the least, guys. Uh, things are looking good. Anyways, I just wanted to show you that so you know I'm not a BSer and I do make money on Amazon. This is my full-time business, my full-time income. So now that I've proven myself to you guys, um, let's get into it. Okay, so like I said, guys, this is the free method to uh, digging through and analyzing your distributor pricing list. You do not need to do it this way. There are uh, quicker ways to do it, but it costs quite a bit of money per month for a program to actually um, and, or to to to, uh, to dig through the price list for you. And not all price lists can be um, analyzed or you know can be dug through or whatever um, with an actual program. Sometimes you need to do it by hand and. Uh, that's just the way it is. Now, if you have UPC codes on your actual price list, 
then the program can do it, but it costs money. Anyways, we're not going to talk about that. We're going to talk about how to do things free and cheap. So here we go. And by the way, guys, this is a price list from a distributor that I opened up myself. Um, so I'm basically giving this to you guys. There are profitable products on this list. It's a Canadian distributor. And if you guys feel free to open up the account and dig through the 15,000 items that are on there, so be it. There's profitable items on it. So here we go. This is the Excel spreadsheet, guys, that you see on the screen. Now, I'm going to quickly just go into what exactly you're looking at here and what is useful and what isn't useful. So starting off on the left-hand side, we have the SKU. Now, this SKU here is for the actual distributor. That's for their own online data, you know, per their, their database. Now, um, that's not 100%. It's not too useful to us, but it's more so useful to them. Um, another thing that you're going to want to look at is if it has a UPC column. If it has a UPC column, guys, that's super useful. Now, the reason why it's super useful is because you can either look up the item by the UPC code. That's the most accurate way to look up an item because every item that's on Amazon, not every item, but most items will have a specific UPC code and they don't you know, one item doesn't have more than one PC code type of thing. Um, so that's an accurate way of looking up an item. So you know apples to apples you're comparing and you know what you're buying. Number two is the brand name. Arguably one of the most important um, with the UPC code. It's super important for the method that I'm about to teach you guys. Uh, we have a call. Now, sorry, just to backtrack, not all price lists are going to look like this, guys. Some vary, but this is your average, typical one that you're going to see most of the time if you get it in Excel format. Major key. Um, departments, guys. Uh, this is just showing you what the department is. Uh, this one here, like it says furniture. Um Description. This is pretty important because, like I said, you want to make sure that what you're looking at on the Excel spreadsheet or the price list and what you're looking at on Amazon are the same thing. You, you want to make sure it's the same variation, the same whatever, because you don't want to buy something or buy a whole bunch of something and have it get to your house or ha even worse, send it into Amazon and realize that it's not the same thing and customers start returning them. Your account could have poor, you know, Amazon could suspend you. They could penalize you. You just don't want to get in that situation. If you're sending something into Amazon, you want to make sure that you're sending in the right item all the time. And then over here, guys, on the right-hand side, uh, this might be a little bit confusing, but we're going to be basing everything, what I'm going to show you today, off of the yellow category or the yellow column, which is, uh, it says, 17 Q2. That means that it's 2017, the second quarter price list. Now, some distributors adjust their prices based on quarter to quarter or throughout the year. And when they do this, they might send you an adjusted price list catalog. So when they send you an adjusted price list catalog, the old one is garbage. The new one takes, uh, you know, its place and you're going to use those new prices to base your decisions off of. Now, the reason why prices can change uh, throughout the year, you never really know, but usually the prices change because the dollar, uh, the value of the dollar changes. So if they're buying from US distributors and you're in Canada or vice versa and the dollar changes, that means that their margins and their buy cost changes, which they obviously pass down to you and, uh, and you feel that pressure as well. So that's, uh, that's another reason, guys. Okay, let's jump into this. Now that I've explained to you guys what exactly we're looking at, the first thing I do, guys, and the quickest way to do this is I search by brand. And what I mean is I would go like this. I would, I would let's just start right here. I would, I would cover over the brand name and I would copy it. So you can either right click and copy it or you can control V, whatever your preference is. Then I go to Amazon, 
and I control V or I paste it in there and I search for it. Now the reason why I'm breaking this down by brand guys, let me just go to the Excel spreadsheet again. We are going to be looking things up by brand. And the reason why we're doing this is instead of looking up every single UPC code, which guys, there are 15,000 of them on this, on this price list, 15,000 items to look through. Instead, oh, there's brother. Anyways, instead of looking up every single item, we're going to look up brands. And I'm going to show you why right now. Okay, we are looking up this brand. Now, what I'm doing when I type in this brand and I search it on Amazon, I'm trying to gauge right away. I'm looking, my thought process is I'm gauging what is the demand for this item? Like, is the item actually selling? Is this brand, sorry, is this brand actually selling? And if this brand is actually selling, then I can move on to the next step to seeing what items of the brand is, is selling. But if the brand isn't even selling, there's no point in me looking any further into it. So what I can see here is I'm looking by and even at the title and I'm looking like, okay, do I see my brand name that I just searched in any of these items? And I'm like, uh, no, I don't. In this case, I mean, here I see it, but there's no reviews, there's no nothing. I'm like, <clears throat> in this specific case, uh, I don't see me having to search any further into this. So then what I would do, sorry, I just lost my track here. What I would do is I would go to the next brand and I would copy it and I would go like this. I would search for, what am I searching for again? I'm searching for Acro Millis. Okay, so we have Acro Millis right here. It's got five reviews, Acro Millis. Ah, okay. Whoa, Acro Millis has got 83 reviews here. Now we look, it looks like this product could be have decent so then what I would do guys is I would open up a couple of these just to get a better idea what exactly uh, the demand for is for this brand and a couple of the items from the brand okay 122 reviews that's amazing but what do we see here guys on the right hand side Where does it say? Oh, ships from and sold by Amazon.ca. That is what you don't want to see. So since Amazon sells this product, guys, we're, we can't compete with Amazon. Um, we're going to move on to the next one. And this product here also ships from and sold by Amazon. We cannot compete with Amazon, so we don't want to. But it, it's a great seller. Look at this thing. So <clears throat> basically what we're doing is we're going to repeat this process until we find a product that, Am that sells well and Amazon isn't selling. As soon as we find something that meets that two criteria, we can move on to actually look at the price. And what we would basically do is let's pretend that Amazon wasn't selling this item, guys. Okay, let's see if we can find this item in the Excel spreadsheet. Now it's going to be a little bit tough, but look, it has a little model number here. Acromillus 10124. Let's just see if this is on here. There's only a couple things on here, guys, so the chance of it being on here is slim. But 10124 in the SKUs, I don't see it. Here are some bin plastic blue, blue, blue. So that's interesting. None of these are going to be the ones that we just saw. Um, so we'll move on. We'll move on to another one. Okay, well, let's go Alliance Rubber Band. Okay. 
do this, alliance rubber band. Here's alliance right here, a rubber band as well. And we'll just open up this one as well. Okay, so let's check out these three examples. This is what I do for every single product, guys. I just go by brand. And sorry, if I haven't explained it yet, the reason why I'm not going item per item is because I can gauge the demand for the brand right away just by searching the brand's name. I can see, oh, there's a bunch of reviews for this brand, which typically means it's selling well. And there's a bunch of products listed, which typically doesn't always mean that it's selling well. But between seeing these, you know, a couple few things, I'm like, okay, I, I'm gauging to see the demand for it. And then I open them up to see some further information. So as I open it up, I see, okay, six customer reviews. They have a bunch of different products here. But guys, what do we look for right away is ships from and sold by Amazon.ca. That means that we can't sell this product because we typically can't compete with them, which means it won't be worth our time. But let's scroll down, look at the Keepa chart. Okay, looks like it doesn't even sell well anyways, so we wouldn't even mess around with this specific product. Um, guys, if you don't understand what I'm doing when I look at the Keepa chart, I just recorded a video on how I analyze Keepa charts. Go back to that video on my channel, give that a watch, and then come back to this video. If you don't use Keepa or you don't understand how to read Keepa, then you're not ready for this video. Um, Okay, let's just close down this product. Look, same thing. Look, it's just another product off the same listing. Amazon is currently selling this product and it doesn't even sell well, so let's forget about that. Look at this one, it's got a little more reviews. Let's see if it's selling. Doesn't sell either. So I can right away tell guys this brand is a waste of time. So we'll just close it down and let's go to another one. Okay, I wanna find something on here, guys, that I can show you. Okay, I know that this brand here is pretty popular, Avery Products. At least I think it is, let's check it out. Ah, uh, yes, I thought I recognized it. Okay, so this is gonna be a good example here. What I know that this brand sells quite a bit um, let me find one here. This one here is going to look how many reviews there. It's good. Let's go with this one and let's go for one more that has high reviews and I'm going to actually find this product on the distributor list. Okay, let's go with this one maybe. Okay, so let's open it up. Right now, if I didn't already know, I'd be getting excited. I'd be like, oh yeah. Let's, let's just hope that Amazon isn't selling this item and we're gonna be good. So, number one thing we look for guys, is Amazon selling this item? Yes, they are, right here. So, we typically wouldn't look at this, but for this example, we're gonna pretend that Amazon doesn't sell this item because look how much this item sells. If Amazon didn't sell this item, this would be a home run, it'd be great, to move on to the next step. And here's what the next step is. It's find the item on your distributor list. Let's pray that our distributor actually carries this item from this brand. So let's take a look guys. And also I'm gonna show you why we can't compete with Amazon. So uh, we need to find this item as fast as possible. This is an Avery, it has a model number of 22822. So. Let's go back here and we have to find Avery 22822. Now, what is the best way to find this? We could go control F and so 22822 up at the top and let's search for it. What do you know guys? It came up with a SKU of AVE, which is Avery 22822. And super easy to find it just by using control F and what control F does for all the newbies out there is it's control, it's finding anything on that page and you fill it in into the, uh, you fill in what you want it to find and it will search for that specific item. So it found it here and it looks like our distributor will sell us each unit 
for $15.62. So what we will do guys is we will open up another screen and you're going to want to bring up the fulfillment by Amazon revenue calculator. And what this thing does is it will tell you all the information you need to know about how much Amazon will charge you to use their uh, fulfillment center to fulfill your items. It's FBA. So what you're going to do is you're going to go back to the product page, right? And every product page on Amazon has something called an ASIN. And it's down here at the bottom. You scroll down and here it is in the additional information section under product information. You're going to copy the ASIN and you're going to go over here. Okay guys, so as soon as you paste the ASIN into the actual revenue calculator and you hit go, it's going to bring it up and you're going to obviously want to verify that this is the correct one. Now what you're going to do is you're going to put in the Amazon price. This is the slow way of doing this guys. There is a quicker way of doing this. You can download little Chrome extensions. Like for example, I have one here called AMZ Scout Calculator and it's a little button in the top right hand corner and when you click that button, it will bring up the calculator right here on your actual screen. Now for the easy of this um, video, we're not gonna use this. We're gonna use Amazon's tool but that is something available to you. Anyways, guys, you're gonna need the product price. This is 1882. So we're gonna type this in here, 1882. Now you scroll down, delivery to Amazon. This varies based on how big and how heavy the item is, and you guys will learn this over time. This item is super thin. It's just like a, it's like the size of like a binder, not even like size of like a file, and, um, we're just gonna estimate that it costs 50 cents a unit to send it in. Now it's not gonna cost that much, but you know that's typically the price that I'll put for every item that I'm gonna send in, unless it's an oversized item that is actually heavy. So 50 cents for the item. Now the cost of the product. Guys, how much was the cost of the product? Let's go back to our Excel spreadsheet. It is 15.62. So back to here, 15.62 and calculate. Now we're crossing our fingers as we're hoping that there's going to be money left over at the end of the day. I already know unfortunately that there is no money on this item because you can tell but let's calculate and it's going to give you all this information here. Now net profit if we were to sell this item if we were to buy it from our distributor at $15.62 an item and sell it for $18.82 which Amazon is currently selling it for we would make a profit of negative $3.70, which is a net margin of negative 19.66%. That means that we would be losing $3.70 per sale. So like I said at the beginning, guys, I know right away that 99 times out of 100, you cannot compete with Amazon. They can get the price cheaper than your distributor can get it to you for, and sometimes they'll even sell it at a loss to beat you. So, um, even if this wasn't Amazon selling the item and it, it was currently an FBA seller selling this item, right? Let's just go to the product page so I can show you. Let's pretend that Amazon wasn't the seller and this was somebody else, a third party seller selling this item. If they were selling it at 1882, what I would do is I would check, this is kind of advanced guys, I would check the Keepa chart and I would see, well, is the price that it's currently being sold at the price that is it's always been, been sold at or is this just a temporary price? And the way I would do that is obviously you need to know how to read Keepa, but I would go down to the statistic bar here and I would look on the left hand column or in the middle, I would say, I would see what is the average price over the last 180 days. Now, if the average price is anywhere near what the current price is, you know, you can basically uh, assume that that's what the price is. But sometimes random people get access to inventory and just hop on Amazon, blow it out real quick, sell it for a certain price, and 
they're, once they're gone, the price can go back up to what the regular price, the regular selling price is. Um, that's kind of advanced, guys, but you just always want to make sure that you uh, you understand what you're looking at. So I kind of went off topic there, but uh, yes, that is an, an advanced tip for you guys. Anyways, Amazon selling this item. We can't compete with them on this specific item. Let's move on to the next one. $13.90 for this item, guys. Let's just try to find this one and see what our distributor can do. So I'm going to copy the model number. I'm going to go to Excel. I'm going to control F. I'm going to see if I can find it. Okay. It's coming up in another brand. I'm going to keep on cycling through to see if it comes up for the brand we're looking for it in. I think this is going to take way too long. Oh, I found it. I think I found it. $4.33. We might be able to make money on this though. Okay, let's just copy the UPC to figure out if this is the actual product that we're looking at. So I'm going to put the UPC in the uh, Amazon search bar. No, this is different. Okay, so I can't actually find the specific one. This is why it's important to have the UPC and product description so you can verify, cross-verify exactly what you're looking at. Okay, so I can't exactly find this one. I'm sure I could find it, guys, if I kept on digging through. But regardless, I'm not going to spend any more time trying to find this item because Amazon sells it. Okay, I'm just doing this to show you guys um, my thought process and uh, and just as a demonstration. But I'm not going to continue trying to find this item through a long list of this brand because this brand has so many products up here from the distributor that it's just not worth the time. Okay. So that is basically it guys. Um, I'm going to cut this video because I've shown you guys exactly everything you need to know when it comes to digging through these price lists. My thought process in how I actually look up the items. Just to recap, you take the, uh, the brand name and you're going to search it up here in the, in the product bar. I'll do it one more time for you guys. So look, we got Bic Pen. No, let's not do that one. Uh, we're going to go this brand here. This I know this one. We're going to go boom, search it up. And what do you know? It's an amazing selling brand. And so this would be money. Now, if I didn't see that it was an amazing selling brand, I would just go right off to the next level or right off to the next brand. Since this is a good brand, I would dig a little further. So I would start opening up a couple products from this brand and then I would start digging through, does Amazon sell this product? If yes, move on to the next one and try to find a product that Amazon isn't selling. If Amazon isn't selling it, then I dig a little further. I go back to the price list and I try to find that item. I say, hey, is this distributor offering me this product? Do they even carry this product? If they do, that is when you take the price and you go over to the Amazon price calculator and you do the math or you let the calculator do the math. And what that math is, is here's the price that it's currently being sold for in Amazon. Here's the price I get it for. Is there any room in between? And that room in between is profit at the end of the day. After Amazon's fees and calculations and everything, you're left with profit. I hope this video was a good, uh, a huge help to you guys. Um, like I said, guys, this is very time, uh, you know, consuming, very tedious work, but this is the free way to do it. You have, you don't have to pay for anything here. Um, this is how I got started. This is still how I do it to this day. I still do not use any programs, guys. Um, if you guys would like to know programs to use, let me know in the comment section below and I will, uh, I will put a link in the description of this video on a program to use that will actually scan the UPC codes for you. So you basically just hit scan and uh, you come back and it will give you the results. The results aren't always 100% accurate, but it damn sure speeds up this process because you can see how long it might take to go through 15,000 items. But guys, I'm a huge 
advocate of doing things, learning how to do things manually first and understanding the whole process. Because if you don't learn how to do this yourself manually, um, you won't know the fundamentals of this business. And if you don't know the fundamentals, you can make some very costly mistakes. And typically, guys, I'm not going to lie to you, the margins in this business are a lot smaller than some other businesses. And making mistakes can be very costly. If you make one large mistake, you can completely screw up your business. So you really want to take the time to learn how to do this, learn how to do it properly. And that's why I still do things manually because I am the decision maker, not a program that can screw things up. Um, Please like, please hit that like button if you guys got any value to this video. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already. And please, guys, don't forget about uh, you know my proposal of dropping a course. If you guys are interested in seeing a course about everything, all this stuff compiled into one uh, location and some in-depth uh, tips and tricks, please let me know in the comment section below. Thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate all the love. Till next time, peace.